Hello everybody. I hope you're doing okay today. Cooperating where you are. I know many of us have concerns about uh, what's going to take place in this country because of the elections and all. And we have right to be concerned, but uh, we also need to understand, yeah, God is in control. And so maybe he is testing us. See what we're made of. And of course, Jude I mean, James uh, chapter 1 and verse 2 through 4 talks about the testing of our faith. And definitely, this past year in 2020 was definitely a challenge to the faith of many. And yes, many fell away from the faith because they really weren't uh, held to the faith in the first place. And that, that's really sad. And souls are going to be lost. And um, it's a real tragedy. And of course, the animosity towards Christians and and the overall idea of Christianity uh, is going to grow. It's going to be emboldened more. And so, yeah, they're going to try and shut us up. But we're not going to give up. Doing this as long as God wants us to, as long as God allows us to do this, we're going to do it and um, do the best. And the lessons that we present are hopefully to encourage Christians to be faithful and strong but also get them motivated to do what they're supposed to do. You know, the Hebrew writer says to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. So that's what we're trying to do. And so consider these thoughts. Uh, there was an event that happened uh, near my home. Uh, of course, that's like 22, 23 years ago. And uh, I mean, it, it touched me so much that I wrote an article about it. And so, the, the title of the article is Snatch Them Out of the Fire. And so I introduced, uh, I started my article with, I sat with tears in my eyes as I listened intently to the news reports about an event that happened near my home the other day. See, during the morning rush hour on a Monday, a bus filled with passengers was traveling in the special lane designed for uh, high occupancy vehicles. And the driver might have been distracted because he did not notice the traffic ahead had slowed down to a very slow pace. And the bus just plowed into the back end of an SUV containing a mother and her children. And by the time onlookers and fellow motorists got out to the scene to render aid, the gas tank began to burn. And the mother was helped out and someone pulled the little boy out, but the nine-year-old girl was trapped. And about 10 to 20 people tried to help get the girl out, yet without success. And then after a lot of fire extinguishers uh, were exhausted, the flames finally, finally overtook the vehicle and the little girl burned to death. And all this happened within just a few minutes. And it was a horrible tragedy. And uh, I mean, just, the, the, just remembering that scene, I mean, it's that and so you can only imagine the horror that was going through the minds of those people standing by and watching this little girl perish the pain of a mother watching her child die cannot be put into words and whatever happens to the driver who caused the accident I I never heard if he was reprimanded or anything they just chalked it up as an accident but just knowing that he killed a person will haunt him for the rest of his life and as I reflect upon these events, there are other things that come to mind. And as I was thinking about this, I can only imagine the cursing and swearing by the thousands of motorists on their way to work because they were inconvenienced by this event. They were fussing and fuming about the traffic and their being late to work. And I'm sure the Lord's name was used in vain on numerous occasions as our society has no problem with such language. And we know that. I can try to imagine the desperate efforts that several were, were putting forth and running around and asking for fire extinguishers and any assistance at all. And I commend those who rushed upon the burning vehicle and put their own life in perilous situation because of their concern for a fellow human being. And I would imagine that all of them would question their own actions for years to come with the thoughts of, if only I had. And I can just imagine, yeah, I mean, years later, what if I would grabbed this or, or did that? What if I would grabbed a crowbar? What if I had, I mean, 
it just goes on and on. We feel sorrow for the mother who will miss her daughter and the brother who will miss her sister, and their loss can never be regained. So in view of all these events, I'm reminded of a passage in Jude 23, and it partially reads, Save others, snatching them out of the fire. So I know that the fire in Jude is not a physical fire. But I think it appropriate to bring it up because many that wear the name of Christ are in many ways similar to those I just described above. Some are inconvenienced, some are willing to help, but they just don't know how. Some are willing to try, even though it looks like a desperate situation, and others are seeing the loss of loved ones. And so, yeah, there, there's many ways uh, Christians are described these ways. See, many brethren usually get upset that someone else has a problem and, and that it sometimes gets in their way of doing things. Yeah, no one likes to be inconvenienced at any time. And sadly, many brethren would show great courage to save a human from a gasoline fire, but would not put forth any effort at all to save a soul from an eternal fire. I think this is a greater tragedy because there's millions who call themselves Christians, but it's quite obvious they don't care about anybody else. They don't care about the souls of others. And so, yeah. And yes, commendably, some would certainly be concerned and do what they could to offer assistance, even at the risk of hurting themselves or by providing a necessary need in an emergency. And there are far too, too few of these in the church today. And so the real lesson is in the overall picture of these events. Until we Christians can look upon souls of men as being lost, we will not make any effort at all to save them or attempt to snatch them out of the fire. So as his disciples, we are given the great commission to go make disciples, make other disciples. We are to teach others about God and his laws and his grace. We are to do this because we love souls and each other. Yet without love, we are just wasting our time. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 2 and 3, Paul talked about that. He could do all sorts of things, but if he didn't have love, it, it, it was really just worthless. So consider these thoughts. May we all seek to remind ourselves of the great blessings that God has provided for us. And may we not be so selfish as to keep those blessings from others. You go through the Psalms, and there's many passages about uh, the, the, the psalmist saying, well, I will declare to the nations, I will declare to my brethren, I will declare to others, I will declare to the next generation what the Lord has done for me and how great and awesome our God is. And sometimes we don't even talk about that. Even amongst our brethren, we don't talk about how great and awesome God is and what he's done for us. I mean, he, he, he through the sacrifice of his son, provided salvation for us. And we have the hope of an eternal life of bliss uh, when this life is over. And so we should be more than excited to tell people about these things. But yet, we are so selfish, we keep those blessings from others. We let other people, well, well, they're not interested, they don't care. They're not making the effort to come into our church building and learn, so why should we be helping them? I mean, that seems to be the attitude a lot of people display. See, when, when we do that, we have failed to snatch them out from the fire. And we will have failed in capturing the essence of Jesus in our lives. I mean, Jesus gave up his life for all of us. And what do we do in return? Well, we look out for good old number one. And that's dangerous, folks. We've talked about that many times. And that is dangerous to be only concerned about yourself. Because if you're not concerned about the souls of others, you're not going to go to heaven. I mean, that, that's plain and simple. People have been saying that for hundreds of years. And it is true. See, Almighty God responded to the cries of help and despair offered by those who have been separated from him by sin. 
Yes, and sin does separate us from God, Isaiah 59 and 2. And God provided a means of salvation. His grace is the gospel message of salvation offered to all men, Titus 2 and 11. And Jesus Christ is the means and method of salvation today. And John 14, 6, the Holy Spirit revealed the good news so that souls could be saved. And it's available to us. In electronic format, a lot of us carry it around on our, on our cell phones. And we have the means of salvation today. And we have the means of helping others. And we should be trying to help others whether they want it or not. I mean, the Holy Spirit revealed the good news so that souls could be saved. That's why he did it. The gospel was preached so that souls could be saved. And the church was built and designed to affect the salvation of souls. And the only way to come into a relationship with God is through Jesus and following his commands. And the only way to have spiritual blessings is to be in Jesus. And it's obedience to the gospel that puts one into Christ. So, all I'm saying is, if we do not try to save souls, we will not enter heaven. You know, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, all those people were doing a lot of things, but apparently they weren't trying to help souls be saved. So, brethren, there, there's a lot of things we need to think on. And, of course, Philippians 4, 8 tells us to think on those things that are good. But the message of salvation is good. And if we withhold it from others, we are depriving them. And yeah, you might come across and justify it. Well, nobody wants to listen. We live in a wicked world and nobody's interested in hearing the gospel. How do you know that? Because the Bible tells us that there are souls seeking. There are souls seeking to worship God. And so we do not know if God doesn't put us in a particular situation or place to be ready for us to let our light shine and be a guiding light to someone else. And we need to consider that. And of course, a lot of people who claim to be Christians, they don't let their light shine. They don't show Christ in their actions. They, in fact, people couldn't tell them from people of the world. And, and so, yeah, we've got to make the efforts, people. All of us. We all need to make these efforts to do what we can to save souls. And... Just consider these things. It's important. Do what you can to help souls be saved. Do what you can and share the message. <coughs> and it's like you're running into a burning fire to try and save somebody. I mean, think about that. A lot of us as human beings, we, we might put our lives in jeopardy if we realized someone was in danger and we would either warn them or try and assist them in some way. But when we see souls all around us that are lost, what do we do? Well, get out of my way so I can get to church. I mean, that's basically how it, it appears a lot of people would react. And I think that's sad. So, I mean, there's tragedies happen all the time. We hear of situations. We have the sickness going on. We have the virus. There's a lot of things going on. But folks... Start trying, start trying to save souls because that's the only way you're going to get to heaven. So consider these thoughts and um, we're going to end the lesson now. Uh, you have a good day, a blessed day, and do something for God. And just if you happen to be, be talking to somebody, ask them where they go to church. Ask them if they believe and what they, where, where they go. If they believe everything is right, do they believe in the Bible? And ask them if they'd be willing to study the Bible. We'll find a way. I mean, if you don't feel confident doing it, there's other Christians who would be willing to sit down and assist you in teaching souls how to be saved. So do something for the Lord today. Y'all have a good day. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.